Hello and welcome to lesson 10 of Software Design and Development for National 5 Computing Science. Today we're going to look at conditional loops. Conditional loops are incredibly useful and you're going to need to use them in your National 5 assignment and you may have to explain them in the exam. So let's take a look. This is what we did last time. This uses a fixed loop. Remember a fixed loop knows before it starts how many times it will loop. So here we get the number of items and that is how many times it will repeat. Conditional loops work differently. Let's create a new REPL in Python. We'll call this conditional loops one, because we're going to do a couple of these. Now a conditional loop, as the name suggests, relies on a condition on whether it will loop or not. Let me show you an example and this will make a bit more sense. So let's have a number equal to one. And while the number is less than 10, I'm going to increase that number by one, and I'll print the number. Let's see what happens. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So what happens is number starts as one, and the while loop checks if this number is less than ten, and if it is, it will execute the code that is indented underneath this loop. It seems quite straightforward, it's very intuitive, it makes perfect sense, and they're hugely useful. I'll show you a couple of examples. Let's just pretend that we're making a guessing game and we have chosen a number that the user has to guess. I'm going to say seven. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the user to make a guess. So their guess equals a whole number and I want them to enter it through the keyboard. Guess a number between one and 10. Not bad. While their guess is incorrect, while their guess does not equal the number that I want them to, to guess, I'm going to ask them to try again. Wrong. And then I'll just ask them to guess again. Let's copy this and paste it here. Give us a bit more room. Beautiful. Now, if I run this, it's going to look not bad. Guess a number between 1 and 10. If I say 4, it'll say wrong. Guess a number. If I say 6, wrong. If I say 9, wrong. If I say seven, it ends, the program ends. We get out of this loop because this only loops while the guess does not equal the number that we're asking them to guess. Seems pretty straightforward, but the end is a bit dissatisfying, anticlimactic. Let's print a message and say, well done, you did it. Let's try it again. Get a couple wrong, then get it right. Well done, okay, that's better. And the thing about while loops is they will run and repeat infinitely while this condition is true. Don't believe me? Give it a try. This is going to get boring. All right, I think you believe me. When I get it right, boom, nailed it. Now, this is a reasonable example of why you would use a while loop. If you want to give someone infinite guesses of a guessing game, that might be a reason. Let's say instead of guessing a number, it's a password they're trying to guess. So the password is computing. And we could say, uh, instead of that, enter the password. And we could say, user pass. This is what they've entered. And while the password does not equal what the user entered, we could say, try again. Something like that. We could say, try again. And this is the user's password. And we could say, password accepted. Something like that. I mean, it's, ex it's exactly the same code, but instead of a number, we're asking them to enter a password. And while they get it wrong, oh, this doesn't look that great. Enter the password, ah, yeah. Oh, and also it's asking for an integer. Holy moly. What a doofus. All right, let's try it again. Enter the password. Wrong, mate, wrong. What? Oh yeah, because the try again is looking for an integer. <gasps> my goodness, am I sure I'm a computing teacher? Okay, let's go. See how testing is very important. So for as long as you're getting this wrong, it will ask you to try again. Let's get it right. There we go. Password accepted. Now, do you remember that previous example? Let's undo everything. This previous example asked us to guess a number between 1 and 10. But when I run this program, I could type in 11. I could type in minus 4. I could type in a million, a trillion, a billion, oh, whatever. It's not actually making sure that I enter a number between 1 and 10. Let's do that. We'll start a new program for this one. And let's say we're asking the user to enter 
their age. Now, this is just going to be a simple example to start with. Now, here's a question for you. What is the lowest age someone can possibly be? Someone could be zero, right? If you're just born, you're zero years old. Can you be less than zero? I'd say no. You cannot be negative one years old. <laughs> I suppose weeks before you're born, you're maybe minus a few weeks or whatever, but generally speaking, you can't be negative. So what we want to say is get the user's age, which has to be a whole number. Only babies say they're eight and a half. <laughs> Enter your age. Here, what we can do is we can say while the age is less than zero, we can tell them to try again. So we could print the message, try again. Age must be a positive number. And then get the input. Or another option is to just include the try again message inside the prompt. So we've reduced the number of lines by one. So this is what's called input validation. Again, this is skipping ahead a little bit into these standard algorithms, input validation, and last time we did running total within a loop. But we will take a look at these in more detail later. But this is a while loop, and it will just continue to loop until this condition is no longer being met. What I mean by that is, if we meet this condition, that means the age is less than zero, it will tell us to try again. Try again, minus 40. And it will keep asking us until we get a number that is not less than zero. So zero isn't less than zero, so it will accept it. And likewise, any positive number will be accepted. Okay. Now you may wish to print a message after this. Success. Something like that. Just so you know that it has accepted it. Now with a conditional loop, you can make the same sort of conditions you could with an if statement. So this is a simple condition, but we could make it a complex condition. Let's say, let's say that we're running a holiday company and we're only allowing 18 to 30 year olds to come on our holidays. Because this is one of those 18 to 30 clubber holidays. We don't want people who are too young to come and we're not wanting ancient folk coming along to our nightclubs. So if the age is less than 18, we're gonna tell them to try again. Or if the age is greater than 30, we tell them to try again. Let's try this. So age must be between 18 and 30. There we are. Let's run this. And your age. So if you're trying to sneak on one of these holidays, but you're only 15, it's like, try again. Now, obviously, this isn't perfect for a holiday company because, because if someone isn't old enough, you're not just going to tell them, oh, try again, give me a different age you're going to knock them back. But this is just an example. And if they're too old, it tells them to try again. But let's say you're like the perfect age, 22, boom, we're in. Now notice that I'm saying while the age is less than 18 or age is greater than 30, it's important that you get your condition correct. One of the most common mistakes in beginning with programming is not checking that your condition is correct. What some people make the mistake of is typing in a condition that checks for the correct age, whereas we want to check for the incorrect age. So less than 18 is incorrect or greater than 30 is incorrect. Some people say while the age is greater than 18 and age is less than 30, well, these are the acceptable ranges. And in fact, greater than or equal to would be acceptable. So if we type this, it's going to ask us to try again when we type in an acceptable age. Try again, try again. And it's only going to quit when we give it an unacceptable age. So we've got this completely backwards. So be aware of that. You're looking for the incorrect ages. And also be aware that it should be or. If you were to type and age greater than 30, well, here's a question. Can you give me a number that is less than 18 and over 30 at the same time? You don't need long to think about it because the answer is that they don't exist. If it's less than 18, it cannot possibly be over 30. So make sure you use the OR here. Here we are. So now, as before, it will accept numbers that are within the range, but will not accept numbers out with the range. So that was a quick look at while loops, and that ends lesson 10. In the next lesson, we're going to take a look at these predefined functions. It's going to be fun, and I hope you enjoy it. I'll see you then.